to where I'm ordained, for things not well made. We are meant from things unseen, they are the realms of glory that my world should see. Dimension not only in Jesus Christ the Son, channels hey, of my spirit. God bless you, really good in Jesus' name. You are welcome to this wonderful program, Tag uh, Revival Diary. This is a wonderful program that God has brought us into and is on assignment to bring and to raise our spiritual temperature. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome each and every one of us to this program and to this platform. And we pray that the Lord God of Elijah, the one who he is, the one who was, the one who is to come, will prove his power strong in our lives tonight in the name of Jesus. As many connecting to us, looking not to go for a wonderful encounter tonight. King of glory shall raise your spiritual temperature in the name of Jesus. This is a new program. I remain your friend, James Alabi, your friend, the School of Apostolic Revival. And uh, on behalf of our group, Revival Fire and Apostolic Movement, we bring forth the program to each and every one of us, wherever we are connecting to us in the world. God bless you as you join us today in Jesus' name. 
I won't be alone. I'll be coming in with one of my pastor friends. Uh, and if pastor friend and is already with us, very shortly we shall unleash him. But we need to know the reason why we are gathered together. And we pray ahead also for God to help us. Let's close our eyes and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, because you are a great God. We lift you high because of the most high God. Thank you, Father, because you are a living God. And thank you for your absolute power. Thank you because you are a wonderful God. Thank you, Lord God, for divine provision and protection over our lives and over the lives of all the viewers and everyone joining us on this platform now. We say be that glorified, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, as we go on, if there's anything in our life that we end up blessings and your touch in our lives tonight, have mercy in Jesus' name. We declare this program open in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And we rely absolutely on you, Lord. We commit everything into your hands from the very beginning to the very end. Holy Spirit, take control and have your way. Your vessel you are prepared to use for us today, Lord, Use him greatly among us and let us also have wonderful encounter with you. Thank you, everlasting Father. No one will attend this program and go back the same. King of glory shall make you a bigger bundle of wonderful testimonies before you go. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you once again in Jesus' name. As many of us are connecting to us, this uh, Revival Diary, as uh, King of glory has laid it in our heart to commence the program for some while now. But due to few one or two information, we have to clear some programs ahead before we proceed with this. Revival Diary is on a mission for, that God has sent to us to several people, several homes, groups, individual, old and young, to raise our spiritual temperature. According to what is written in the book of Psalm 80, 85, verse 6, it says, Without no revivals again, that the people may rejoice in you. That the people may rejoice in you. Meaning that when the Lord revives us, whenever we find ourselves, there will always be rejoicing. And I'm praying for someone that is connecting to us tonight. There will be a great rejoicing in your life and in your endeavors in the name of Jesus. But do not forget what is written in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 15. The word of the Lord said, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou art cold nor what? This is the word of the Lord. And he said, so then, because thou are neither cold nor hot, and you are lukewarm, I will spit it out of my mouth. That is the word of the Lord. But we don't want this to be our Lord, and that is why some of these programs are coming up now for, King, for many of us to get ourselves on fire for God, for the enemy not to have our lives ripped into his, into his jack or into his, into his bands. And I pray for you. You will not be a prey in the hand of the enemies in the name of Jesus. And as we go, we let this mind be in you. Uh, likewise, as it in our Lord Jesus Christ, as stated in the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 5. Romans chapter 12, verse 11 says, not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit. And that is why when we talk most times about revival, revival is always bringing backslider, those who are already going back into the world, those who are already sliding back, bringing them into the, into the repentance of God and God also touching them and bringing them into a complete obedience with him and his voice. Many people are connected to us tonight and I know King of Glory will surely touch you and transform your lives greatly in Jesus' name. God bless you very really good as we go on. Remember and have this at the back of your mind as we go that revival is God renewing your faith again. In order for you to believe, we can host several programs uh, uh, to call for miracles. Uh, but when we experience true salvation and revival, these miracles shall be in essence and will be what we can easily assess wherever we are connected to us in this program. With the vessel of the Lord that, we sh that God shall be using for us tonight, is going to be elaborating more and telling us more about some of these things. So be prepared to enjoy the presence of God and the flow of the Holy Spirit because we rely absolutely on him and he's going to see us through. And I know the vessel that God has prepared for us is also here because of you and you shall testify at the end of the program. I remain your friend again, James Alabi, and the wonderful pastor that God is bringing to us to use with us today is, uh, is, is a vessel of God and is one of the sons of the prophet as well. Is a revivalist and king of glory has, uh, has been with him. He's, has led many groups and King of Glory also has led him through several people as well that have raised him. And he will be with us tonight to bless us greatly as the King of Glory has directed our path to bring him up tonight into this program. And once again, after the program has gone on for a while, we would like you to also throw your question at us. We want to answer one or two questions from you. We have some questions we'll be asking from here. And we also want you to ask one or two questions from there. You can either put a call through to us through the numbers that are there, not WhatsApp call now, but you can send a WhatsApp text to us. We read the questions or you also call the number and we also pick up the call and you hear the questions being answered by the 
guests that King of Glory has brought to us. God bless you, Regood, in Jesus' name. I welcome you to this program today. Pastor Wale Peter Osho is the vessel that God will be using to us. Is the is the leading pastor of Vessel Ablaze Squad International, and King of Glory will be using greatly. Many of us know him very well, and the Lord has brought him to be part of this program today. God bless you, Pastor. You are welcome in Jesus' name. Thank you very much for having me, sir. <laughs> it's a great pleasure. It, it is well with you, sir. We really appreciate having you around, and it's also a great uh, pleasure to us too. All right, sir. Thank you so much. God bless you. We want to believe the family is doing great and you are welcome to this wonderful program. This is a revival diary where we tell more people about revival and how they grow their spiritual life. And as we go on on this program, uh, there are a few questions we have already with us. But as we go on, we'd just like you to give us a brief introduction. Um, I may not be able to introduce you better to people connecting to us at this time with, with the profile that you have. We'd like you to just introduce yourself briefly before we go on in what we are here to do. God bless you as you do, sir. So, all right, thank you very much. My name is uh, Pastor Wally Peter Osho. Um, uh, the youth pastor in the MFM Ikorodu Youth Church, Ikorodu One. And by the grace of God, I also um, lead a missionary team, a revivalist ministry. It's an international ministry, versus a place called International. And I also um, directly work on the mentorship and the tutorship and uh, coaching of our Father and the Lord, Dr. D.K. Choir. And uh, we thank God because um, the Lord has been faithful and been awesome uh, through the mentorship of our Father and the Lord. God has been faithful, God has been awesome um, through his direct mentorship. And um, I am married with two children. And I don't know what else you want to do. <laughs> so I graduated from Olympia about University, uh, by the way, and I studied applied theology and um, and so on and so forth. I don't know any other thing you want to do. Yeah, God so, bless you. We are, we, are, we are okay with that for now. Thank you for giving us best. You can see that I have not been able to introduce you better because you know all this profile, I have not been able to mention them. And King of Glory, God bless you, really good in Jesus' name. As we go on, uh, many people are connecting to us right there on our Facebook platform and also on our YouTube. And we welcome once again each and every one of us as we welcome our pastors. So please, once again, you can put one or two of your questions together as we go on. But some of the questions that we shall be thrown, we know they shall be meeting also some of those questions in our minds as well as we go ahead in this Revival Diary. God bless you once again. Pastor, I'm starting with this wonderful question that uh, we, we've, we've seen you in several places. We've seen you holding several programs. Many of us have been part of the programs. We've also ministered and also attended the programs and we've also been blessed. And we've seen your connection with several people in places. And we want to know, how did you start your spiritual journey that have led you into becoming a revival vessel in this generation? Well, that's a great question. Um, well, I'll, I'll try as much as possible to summarize it because <laughs> it's a big question. Well, uh, I thank God because, um, all glory to God, um, God has been faithful in, in my spiritual journey. It has been by his grace, it has been by his mercy. I, I would like to say that I gave my life to Christ when I was still very, very young. That was mm -hmm. when I was still in secondary school. I think I remember when I was in GSS class or so. And then we attend Anglican Church. So I, as at that time, I gave my life to Christ. So I, I found the Lord very early. So at, at that time, I remember that um, when we were doing Sunday school and teachings in our, in our former church, Anglican Church then, um, one of our Sunday school teachers taught us about um, uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and... Um, it spoke to about praying, praying in tongues and all those things. And after that time, somebody was praying in tongues. Somebody started praying in tongues, and I so much converted because that was the first time I heard somebody praying in tongues in African church. So I so much converted, but something strange happened. The reverend of the church stopped the person praying in tongues and said, "What kind of a thing is that? That such thing is not allowed in the church." So I was, I was hot. I said. Ah. But this is scriptural. This is something that is in the scripture. Why is why why is somebody being stopped from praying in tongues? Mm -hmm. So it 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 created a curiosity within me. So I went on with the church until I now 
was able to get in contact uh, with um, Martin of Miracle Ministries. I remember then in 1994, around 1995, that was when I was able to join the ministry. I remember the 1994, 1995, that's when I was able to join the ministry. And, um, and through that, that the Lord was... Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you. I said that is a long time. Go ahead, sir. We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, okay. All right. So I I remember that when I met when, when I came into Mountain of Our Miracle Ministries there around 1994, 1995, I, I saw the raw power of God. I so I was saying those things that I was reading in the scripture. Those things that uh, they, they were teaching us in Sunday school, I was seeing that they were course, Oh wow, this is real! So what am I doing in my former church that they are not, they are not, they are telling people to start speaking in tongues and all those things? So I, I plugged into the ministry and I remember that I started converting the gift of the spirit. I started converting the power of the Holy Ghost. I started converting the uh, the gift of speaking in tongues. So I now remember 1998 to be precise. I, I was under the administration of the Holy Ghost baptism group and they were teaching on baptism of the Holy Ghost and that was my first encounter of revival. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost that day. As I was speaking in tongues, the tongues were so real and so, so evidential to the extent I thought that maybe by the time I start going, you know, I when I want to maybe probably talk to people, I'm not able to speak in normal language again. I was speaking in tongues all through because it was so real and so evident. And um, I got home. I didn't just feel like talking to anybody. I locked up myself for seven days. I just wanted to, I just kept praying in tongues for seven days. And I got so many encounters. The Lord met me. The Lord was able to visit me. I was able to see the Lord mighty. So it was awesome. You know, I, I, I could not stop praying in tongues for seven days. And through that, I was able to get a lot of spiritual gifts. I was able to get um, the, the, the empowerment in the Holy Ghost. And um, as I then, I was as young as I was, I think I should be around 19, 20 years of age, they started making me a leader in the church. Right, I think 1999, to be precise, I became an house fellowship leader in the church. You know, as young as I was, why? why? Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because they could see the evidence of the power of the Holy Ghost upon my life. They could see that this one has been baptized in power and that the Holy Ghost is using, using, really using it. So I could say that um, God, since that time, God has been faithful. It has been from glory to glory in the ministry, trying to feed other and the Lord Dr. Diko with his messages and all those things. It's, it's, really, it's really been awesome and really been wonderful and powerful. And Hallelujah. also give God praise because after that time, there have been various encounters. Various encounters, the Lord would meet with me, would tell me that, okay, meet with me for seven days, fasting and prayer. There have been times I've encountered several generals of faith in the dream with me. And so many things, so many encounters I've had with the Lord. But the, 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 the focal point of the encounter was the first day I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I logged up myself for seven days, nonstop, praying in the spirit and Right from that time, I I could say that God wow. started using me as a vessel Hallelujah. to the glory Hallelujah. of God. Glory be to God. That is a wonderful response from you on that first question. I, I cannot hear you, sir. Leading us, we could see. Oh, hello, sir. I, I'm speaking out. I'm speaking now. I can hear you. Can you hear me now, sir? Okay, you can hear me, but okay, I can barely hear you. I think I'm hearing you faintly. Okay, can you hear me loudly now? I'm still hearing you faintly, sir. Oh, wow. I'm speaking out loud here, and the volume is also up. Um, but we can hear you. Even online, we can as well hear you clearly. We can hear you. Can you hear me now, sir? Oh wow. Okay. Should I should I um probably leave the meeting and I'll come back in again? Maybe that's okay. what's going on. Okay, all right, but we can hear you and I can also hear myself online. We can I'm hear just you. hearing you faintly anyway. Okay, all right. Can you hear me better now? 
Hello, sir. Okay. Let, okay. Can you, okay, all right. Let, 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 let's, let's bring you in again. Hello? Hello, sir. We can hear you. Okay, why the pastor reconnect to us again? By the grace of God, we continue the program immediately. He comes back. But the Revival Diary has have told us that is on a revival is on assignment to send many of us to spiritual level at which God expected us to operate. And as we have been hearing from the vessel that God has prepared for us this evening, and he has been taking us into some journey now, we shall be going to another question that immediately comes in. And uh, through that, we other questions are available now. We shall be going ahead with them. And we've also informed us that we should also put forth our questions ahead to us. We shall be answering them and also make the number available for us on the screen. You can check the number there. We continue to paste that for you to also get connected to us again. Uh, we, can, we have two options for you to connect to us as we go ahead when it's time for you to ask questions. Not yet time, but when it's time, we open the line for you to make a call. We can hear you. We'll be able to hear you clearly and the speaker and our guests will also be able to answer you very audibly. So please get the number that we have sent to us again. The number, if you have not gotten the number, I call the number for you, plus 234-8056-25-7816. Plus 234-8056-25-7816. God bless us in Jesus' name. Pastor, can you hear me clearly now? Yeah, yeah I can hear you now. Okay, all right, very good. We say thank you for that background that you've given us. It's very interesting, and we pray God continue to strengthen you. We go straight to our second question, and that is it. Uh, basically, the program is set to be on Revival Diary, and for us to begin to open several diaries of Revival, uh, which is going to be on several men of God as well. But being the first person that comes around, we'd like to know this from you, that what does spiritual revival really mean? What does spiritual revival really mean? We appreciate you to go enlighten us more on that. Okay, all right, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, due to my years of um, experience uh, with the encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, encounter with the Holy Ghost, uh, I've been able to gather a lot of things, but I'm going to summarize them through three scriptures. I will summarize what revival means through three scriptures because there is always a, um, a wrong notion about revival today. Many people believe that uh, when the people gather and uh, uh, they are clapping and they are jumping all over the place, that's revival. But there are it's deeper than the way we see it. Because uh, many people th also think that uh, when people fall under the anointing, that is revival, is deeper than that. Fine, that, those are part of the evidential um, um, uh, things that we could see may, of revival. But there are deeper things that we need to look at in scripture. So I'm going to explain two, three scriptures in Second Corinthians chapter three verse eighteen, Second Corinthians chapter three verse eighteen, the Bible says that, "But we all, with one, with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, Hallelujah. even as by the Spirit of the Lord." So, revival is when you are changed from glory to glory. You encounter Jesus, you encounter the Holy Ghost, and there is a revelation of Jesus uh, through you. We are changed from um, glory to glory in his image. Your character, your nature, every aspect of you begin to glow and express the image of Jesus Christ. Everything about you begin to reflect Jesus. Everything about you begin to reflect the Holy Ghost. Everything about you begin to experience and reflect his presence. Because we are sent forth to reflect the presence of God and to reflect the glory of God. So in the course of you being changed from glory to glory, anybody you come in contact with will begin to experience that glory as well. Then it becomes like a chain reaction. Everybody gets revived. Now, in the book of Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 12, 13, Ephesians 4, 13, one side um, or, or that question again through Ephesians 4.13. The Bible says in Ephesians 4.13, that till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So revival is coming to the, 
stature of the fullness of Christ. Coming fully to the stature of the fullness of Christ. If we can get ourselves coming to the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ, and anyone we come in contact with, we make sure that we leave them to become the full stature of Jesus Christ. Then we can say, okay, revival has begun. Then in our popular Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, and you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witness unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Look at the chain reaction. It will start from Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where you are now. So many people have not been able to touch their Jerusalem. They want to move to Judea. They want to move to Samaria. So it has to start from your Jerusalem. So as, as the power of God comes upon you, God will use you to impart your environment, a territory, you become a territorial commander, a territorial transformer. So from Jerusalem, it moves to Judea, it moves to Samaria, then to the uttermost part of the earth. So that's a simple definition I can give about revival. Okay, God bless you, sir. We really appreciate that. And as you have talked about it, that be becoming like image of our Lord Jesus Christ, having his attribute and having his character. In the book of John chapter, chapter 3, from verse 1 to about verse 5 or 6 there, if there was a particular man called Nicodemus, one of the rulers of the Jews, came to Jesus and was asking question, Masters, how can I be born again or how can I make it? And the Lord was able to give him some, some response in that place. Can we link this... Uh, to this salvation, and can we link this with revival, or is that different between revival and salvation? And what are we we actually want to achieve there is that how can one become spiritually revived? How can one be spiritually revived? Is it following the instruction that Jesus gave to Nicodemus, or following other or other laid down principles to get revived? All right, okay. Now, thank God you use that e e example, sir. You yes. know. That, 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 that the first thing is meeting with Jesus. That's the first thing. You have to meet with Jesus. You have to know him. So when the Nicodemus met with Jesus, there are certain things he told him. In fact, the question Nicodemus threw at Jesus, he, Jesus did not answer the question directly. He answered the question according to what is supposed to happen in the life of Nicodemus. <laughs> he didn't answer it directly. So what you could see that even in that particular place, as the Bible goes further, the Bible, Jesus was able to talk about being born of the Spirit. He said, he that is born of the Spirit is Spirit. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. So when you talk about um, um, becoming spiritually revived, you can say that it has to be, the uh, it, it, there must be an evidential fact that you have met with Jesus. You know, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author, and the finisher of our faith is the only one that can help us to finish the faith strongly and finish well. Like um, part of the motto of a revival diary is that uh, NSA contesting for, uh, for, the, for, for the faith, contending for the faith. So looking onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, because all, after all our race on earth, the most important thing is that we have finished well. So we are, the first thing is that you have to meet with Jesus according to Hebrews 12, 2, 12, chapter 2, looking unto Jesus, the author of the of our faith. Then the next thing is that you have to meet and know the Holy Ghost. According to one Acts 1 8 that I said the other time, meet and know the Holy Ghost for you to be spiritually revived. Then the next one is that there must be an aspect of holiness and humility within you. Hallelujah. Because by the time the revival of God comes to you or comes upon you or God begins to use you to impart your generation, there is tendency for you to have an, a, 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 a kind of pride. You know, the devil wants to bring pride into you because God will begin to use you to do signs and wonders and miracles. So there is a need for you to start living a life of humility and holiness. Then after that, it is important for you to get your spirit, get a connected with spiritual gifts. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 1 to 10, spiritual gift is very important in staying revived. Then another thing is that according to what the Bible talked about in Jude chapter 1, from verse 20 to 25, Jude, Jude chapter 1, from verse 20 to 25, the Bible talks about building your, your own innermost faith, your own innermost faith, building up yourself in the Holy Ghost. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 as well, from verse 13 to 12 to 15, it talks about praying in the Spirit, 
praying with the Holy Ghost constantly is also helping to stay revived. Then I'll mention two more. Walk in the Spirit. According to Galatians 5 and 16, he said, Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then lastly, I will say, connect to your spiritual father and mentor. I usually tell people that it is important that uh, you have a mentor. Because it, my own notion is this. You can only have one spiritual father, but you can have several mentors. People can decide to mentor you in various ways, but God will always give you a spiritual father figure, a spiritual father figure, because he, he, a, a spiritual mentors can only train you and teach you on how to do things, but a spiritual father will take you by the hand and will take you there. So many a times, when you want to stay revived, because there's a tendency for you to be distracted at times. When you have a spiritual father figure that has gone ahead of you, they can put you on track, try to correct you, and tell you the right thing to do from time to time. There are several examples in the scripture. Paul, the apostle, was able to mentor and father Timothy. And as a result of the fatherhood of Timothy on Paul, he was able to tell Timothy what to do from time to time. Even at the time that Timothy was trying to do something otherwise, uh, his spiritual father, Paul, was able to put him through in order for him to stay spiritually revived. Hallelujah. Thank you. We really appreciate that uh, enlightenment. And I'll pick it from one or two few words that you have given us as response to this particular question I've asked about getting, um, the, getting, getting power as you get revived, link with Jesus after, after linking with Jesus, getting power, getting a spiritual father and, and uh, observing all these necessary things and living a holy life and all that, that been mentioned now. Uh, what will be your counsel? Because very soon now I'm going to open up the platform for many connected to us also to begin to ask the question. But I still want to throw this question ahead to you start to answer before we proceed. What is going to be your counsel for all your advice for known or unknown revivalists that we are now, we know that revival can either be a pastor, can be an, evang an evangelist, can be a revivalist, a pastor can be a, revival a revivalist, an apostle can be a revivalist, a, an, a prophet can be a revivalist, and all the fivefold, a teacher can also be a revivalist, and other revivalists also that are not even found within the fivefold ministry. And all these, uh, what is going to be your counsel or your advice for the known or unknown revivalists or the discovered or the those that are yet to discover themselves across the globe so they also can pick up one, their, one of their mantles and begin to move on? All right. Thank you very much for that question, sir. Um, now, um, I, when you look at the Bible very well, the first um, revival broke out in Acts chapter 1, yes. where we had various people from all over the world gathered at Jerusalem and thousands of souls were won at a preaching that Peter uh, preached on that day. So the first thing he, he, that um, the, the, the first thing that I would like to advise those um, that are uh, yet to move on the track of revival, or those that have already been uh, that have started started move on that revival movement, is that you must stay connected to the Holy Spirit. We began, and uh, we began this revival race through the Holy Ghost in according to Acts chapter one. So we must stay connected. Anytime you are, you don't feel the presence of the Holy Spirit anymore, then there's a problem. Because you know, even David says that, take not your spirit from me. Take not your spirit from me. Because that is the most precious thing a revivalist can ever have. If the Holy Ghost has left you, there is no way you can stay connected. So the first thing is that you must stay connected to the Holy Spirit. The next thing is that you must stay focused on your revival pattern. Everyone has a pattern that God has given to them. If you go to Exodus chapter 25, verse 40, and Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5, Exodus 25, 40, Hebrew 8, 5, God was explaining to Moses in that place that do not change the pattern at which to which I, re, I reveal to you on the mount. Every true revivalist will stay true to their course of vision. Don't Derail from the pattern. There's a pattern God gave you. As we are watching other ministries growing and all those things, you must always go back to your own blueprint. There's a blueprint God gave everyone. So don't begin to compare yourself with other ministries. Stay glued to the blueprint. And if you stay glued to the blueprint, you will be able to run the race to the end. Then the next one is that examine yourself daily from time to time. As we are going 
in the Lord and as we are, God is using us to impart many people in our generation. You have to stay, you have to examine yourself from time to time. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 5 to 7, talks about examine yourself daily. Then the last one I will mention, I will take it from 1 Corinthians. I would like to read it, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, because this is very, very important, because after our race on earth, this is what it will eventually happen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 8. The Bible says something there, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 8. It says, now, he that planted and he that watereth, watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. We are, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise builder, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and am not a builder thereon. But let everyone that every man take it, how he build it thereof upon. For other foundation can no man lay than the, that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Then the Bible says in verse 12, now it says, Now if any man build upon the foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, a stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare, it, because it shall be revealed by fire. It shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every work, every man's work, of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. <laughs> shall receive the, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but right. he himself shall be saved, yet as, as by fire. So in this place, he's trying to talk about our works on earth. Everything will be, will be passed through fire. You know, the Bible talks about the, the, that of gold, that of silver, precious stones, wood, a stubble. So whatever it is that you are doing on earth as a revivalist, known or non revivalist, discovered or yet to be discovered revivalist, you must understand that your rest on earth, you are going to give account of everything you have done and it's going to be revealed by fire and it's going to pass through the test of fire. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, good sir. So, I, I want to appreciate you for this wonderful response, and thus far you have enlightened us on this. Um, I'm going to make the line open now, but as we make the line open, I'm going to read a question that is already forwarded to us from one of our viewers. Uh, this question is okay. coming to us from one of our viewers, and this is what the question says. They say, hello, sir. What is the greatest revival we need as individual child of God in this perverse season? What is the greatest revival we need as individual child of God in this perverse season? God bless All you. Right. That is a well, question. The greatest revival, if you follow me very well, I think you should be able to get at but the, the answer is in all that I've said. Like right. I said, the greatest revival you can ever have is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Coming to the full stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, uh, many people are looking for a miracle all over the place. Mm -hmm. But one thing, is, one, thing that, one thing that the Bible talks about is this. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. When the power comes upon you, every other thing will work in place. Yeah. In fact, it is that we are, uh, like, like, like uh, my father and the Lord will say, that when the anointing of God comes upon you, the first thing is that it will first of all break your own yoke. <laughs> before the Lord not is to use you to break the yoke of others. So when you encounter God, you know God. The greatest revival you can ever have as a person is to have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you have an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, you keep beholding him through his word. You keep allowing the Holy Ghost to brood upon you from time to time. When you are far away from the Holy Ghost, then it will affect your daily living and everything you do. Now, I usually tell people this, that when the power of God is so much on you, whatever problem you are going through, you don't need to pray for the problem to leave. The problem will automatically leave because the problem will not be able to stay under the power of the Holy Ghost on you in your life. So the greatest thing ever is knowing Jesus and staying empowered through the Holy Ghost. I hope I've never done that question. Yeah, God bless you, sir. I want to believe the person that sent the question has been able to get the question also right. 
Now the line is open for us. The line that we made available for us now, you can either call the number, don't call WhatsApp, call, just call direct line. If you call direct line, we'll be able to hear you and our, our guests will also be able to answer one or two questions from us. But if you are not calling, just send the WhatsApp text to us as the question and we answer that directly. God bless you in Jesus' name as you do so. While we also expect more questions, I will throw this one also that is sent to us. Somebody is asking, I want to believe we've answered this one about the difference between salvation and revival that I've also. Somebody is asking that, what steps can we take as believers to win back a backsliding Christian? What step can okay. we take as a believer to win back a backsliding Christian? Okay. All right. The first thing is this. We must show compassion. Hmm. You don't, at, at most times, when Jesus want to, want, wants to uh, meet with people in the scripture, he would Bible say, and he had compassion on them. And he had compassion. So as a result of the compassion, then the signs and wonders will happen, then they, they will receive Christ. Now, the first thing is that you must show love. You don't, if you want to win a backsliding Christian, you can't begin to condemn. When you begin to condemn, you begin to castigate, you begin to say a lot of things about running the person down. No, it will not help. The first thing is that you show love. Try to show love to the person by calling, by showing that you care. Then the next thing is you begin to go on your knees and start in society because you are not the one that will save the person. It's the Holy Ghost that will do the work. So you have to start praying that the Holy Ghost will encounter the person through the power of intercession and through the power of, uh, of love that you show the person from time to time. One day, the Lord will encounter the person again and the person will be able to bounce back. And every other means you can use to revive the person back, maybe by trying to help the person in prayer or praying with the person, recommending other things that the person can, uh, that can, that can help the person to bounce back. You can, but most importantly, you need to keep it seeding for the person until the person comes back to the Lord. Okay, all right. God bless you, sir. Uh, we still have a few more time to spend, and we are still expecting if anyone is calling him. We are yet to get a call, but we still have another question that is forwarded to us. Somebody is asking here that um, after, how do I, how will I know, or how do I discover that I'm a revivalist or I'm calling to that office? That is the question somebody is asking now. Can you please enlighten us on that, sir? Okay, all right. Uh, well, there is a very simple thing. Um, you know, like I've, I've explained to us what a, what a revival is. Um, so the first is that you must discover who you are. <laughs> because you can't just be, begin to jump and say, you want to uh, start running all over the place and say, okay, a revival is. You must discover who you are. You must know the area God is calling you into. You know, like, um, like our pastor has said earlier, you know, you can become a pastor revivalist. You can become a teacher revivalist. You can, so you must know your area of calling. In fact, you can become... A philanthropist revivalist is very possible. You can become, a, a, you can be into the ministry of health and you are reviving people. So it is not a, a revival. That's why I wanted to get it, get it clearly. Revival is not, a, a, is not only people following the anointing or people getting miracles, signs and wonders. The most important thing is that you are able to reveal Christ to people and you bring them back to the knowledge of God. That's revival. In fact, you can begin to, you can be called into the ministry of help. And the ministry of help, in terms of giving people and uh, uh, those that are less privileged and so uh, uh, and all the people that are in need, and through that, you minister Christ to them, you are, re you are reviving them. Because it, through that, once they have salvation, they'll begin to grow through that. So it is important for you to note that every one of us has been called this assignment. Everybody, every one of us, you have been called to this assignment, and you must get it clearly that this assignment is not for one person, it's for all of us. So we must be able to run this race with uh, uh, the fact that uh, Jesus is running with us, and I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, sir. Somebody is asking a question here, and I'm reading the question directly. We have two. One is asking... Uh, how do I uh, invite the presence of the Holy Ghost to wherever I find myself? That is the first question. And the second one is, is also going that, how can we revive back my fasting life and restoring the word of God? Sir, I Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, sir. 
Can you hear me now, sir? I no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. I think it's there's a, there's a disruption in the network. Okay. All right. Uh, we will we we'll be will be logging in again. We yes, yes, yes. Let me log in back again. There's a disruption okay, in the okay, network. Okay. All right. That will be fine. Okay. All right. As the pastor will be joining us again shortly, the line is still open for if, if you want to make a call, you can call us um, through the available line that is made available. But if not, we are receiving some question already also via uh, text messages and also also on direct line. Some of, some people are sending their question directly to our platform and we have gotten some of them. Somebody just asked a question how to, solve, how to revive your study, your ability to study the word of God and also to fast. And our our invited guest will be attending to that shortly now because he's coming back online and he's going to answer those questions. And after that, I think we just have two more. And after that, we call it a day tonight and we shall be making it another time, this same time next week by God's grace. So please, uh, our, our guest is already coming in now. So I'm going to throw the questions back now and we get answers to them. All right, it's getting loaded. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. We can hear you now. The first question I asked is this. The person said, how, how do I ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit? How do I ask for the presence of the Holy Spirit or I call the Holy Spirit where I am? Okay. All right, the first thing is this. Um, if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are speaking in tongues. Yeah. You have to test for it, test for it. Um, uh, I will advise, that uh, because there's, the Holy Spirit is everywhere and it's wherever you are hearing me from, he is with you where right there. So all you need to do is just go on your knees and pray that Holy Spirit come upon my life. I need if I need a baptism, I need you to baptize me. So when the Holy Ghost baptizes you and you are able to pray in tongues. So in the course of praying in tongues, I, I mentioned it in uh, some of the questions. Okay, sir. So in the course of your praying in tongues, then constantly the presence of the Holy Spirit will begin to come around you. The more you pray in the Spirit, the more you pray in tongues, the Holy Ghost will begin to come, will, begin, will, will fill your room, will fill wherever you are. So the first thing is that be baptized in the Holy Ghost, be able to pray in tongues, then constantly engage in praying in tongues. Don't stop praying in tongues. Make sure you do it from time to time. Okay, so as you do it from time to time, it will help you to be able to constantly engage um, the Holy Ghost to come into wherever, wherever you are. The atmosphere will be convenient for him to come in. I hope I'm able to answer that question for that person. Yes, uh, thank you for that. Uh, somebody is asking how to be. We have already, and the person was trying to ask the difference between and that. Somebody is asking a question about somebody is asking a question the difference between a revivalist and evangelist. I want to believe we've been able to answer that. And a, evangelist can also be a revivalist, and a pastor can also be a revivalist, and also a pastor can be a revivalist. We want to believe we've answered that. Somebody is asking a question that. Can, Can we try to expound or to on the help ministry? App ministry. Can you hear me, sir? Okay. Hello. The ministry of help. Hello, sir. Hello. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you now. Can you hear me, okay. sir? Okay. I, you need to repeat that question, sir. Okay, somebody is asking that you know why we are mentioning that the revivalist can be a pastor can be. A revivalist and an evangelist can be a revivalist, a prophet can be a revivalist, an apostle can be a revivalist. And you said, even if you, you can be a revivalist through philanthropist by being a, a, a philanthropist by helping people, somebody wants to get more knowledge about that and understanding about that. Okay, all right. Now, uh, there are people that, um, a, you know, in the Bible, you discover that 
Peter and the other apostles were saying that they will give themselves to the ministry of the word, but they will not give themselves to serving of tables. So in the body of Christ, yeah. body, you know, it's a body. So the hand, we have the hand, we have the eyes, we have the legs. So everybody has their own part to play. Not everyone will be able to go to the pulpit to say they want to maybe, maybe minister or give the word or understand. There are some people that God, the assignment God has given to them is that God will so much bless them with wealth. And the essence of that wealth is not for themselves. It's for the building of the kingdom. It's not for themselves. So if they do not do it, God can withdraw it from their hand because God gave it to them for the building of the kingdom. People like that, they are also revivalists. The fact that they are not holding mic or they are not shouting all over the place or they are not doing crusade does not mean that they are not, they are not reviving things. They are using their money to revive lives. They are using their money as a tool of revival. So it is also a means of being a revival, revivalist. I hope I've, I've, I hope I've shared more light on that. I hope I've been to answer that. Okay, all right. Thank you, sir. Um, I want to believe we've answered this question as well. The question that the person is asking now to revive the study and fasting life. We know fasting also enables ones to grow spiritually, as been mentioned earlier, and through some of those spiritual temperature. Somebody is asking how do how do I revive my fasting life again? Okay. They are reviving your fasting life. First and foremost, if you go to Isaiah chapter 65, the Bible talks about the fast that God has chosen. You know, there are different kinds of fasting. Um, you have to understand that... Um... Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me, go ahead, sir. Okay. So, you have to understand... Yes, sir. To Isaiah 65, you have to understand... going to Isaiah 65, you have to understand that there are different kinds of fast. The Bible talks about, is it not the fast that I have chosen? So that means there is a fast that God himself will choose for you. There is a general fast that the church can declare is a general fast. There are fasting that maybe your group declares. There are fasting that maybe you declare in your family. But a personal fasting, God will always choose it for you. You can't wake up one day and say you want to go on 40 days dry. No, God must instruct you and will give you guidance on how to go about it. It's an instruction. Now, to revive your fasting life, you must first of all make sure that you get you you ask first of all look at what is it that hindered me from stopping the fasting. Probably it, there could be a lot of distraction. So many things could be love, love hindered you from stopping the fasting. Probably it's your environment or where you are. Maybe you need to go for a retreat out of your environment. Maybe you go to a solitary place. And you will stay away from people and stay there for long. So you need a retreat. The first thing that you need to retreat, go to a solitary place and declare a personal fasting again and make sure that it is a fasting that the Lord will choose for you. Then you can decide to, you know, uh, make probably a day dry fasting or maybe you break every day. You can declare it. And by so doing, by reading the Bible and praying from time to time, with time, your fasting life will come back again. Then it is better for you to start living a fasted life. When you say living a fasted life, that means you have a particular time. Maybe you just eat once a day or you just you don't take breakfast. So that by so doing, it can also help you to revive your fasting life. So through the help of the Holy Spirit and through all these guidance that I've said, then you will you advance back in your fasting life. Okay, all right. Thank you, sir. Somebody is asking a question there, and I have two more, so I'll take this and the last one. Somebody is asking a question that they think they think that still about that ability of using your money as a philanthropist to back up the work of God. Somebody is asking that they, they don't think they can only use their money, but they should also get engaged in preaching and all those other things. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> no, you should not get me wrong. You see. <laughs> It, 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 there are some people, no, like something you call um, uh, dual assignment. Dual assignment. There are some people that they are being blessed with kingdom work. At least I, I know I know some of our regional overseers in in in, 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 in Mountain of Power American Ministries that they are so blessed with money and all those things. They are using to finance the job. At the same time, they are 
power part in preaching. They are very good in preaching. They are very good in dispensing the word. It's, it's, it's a dual assignment. Some people have dual assignment like that. They can be a philanthropist, build the church, do things for the church. At the same time, they are also on the altar ministering and you know, reviving things like that. But there are some people that are not graced for that. So know where you are graced for. Don't say because uh, you too, you want to mount the pulpit and start preaching. And whereas God did not grace you for that assignment, it's not everybody that is graced for it. There are some people that they are just on the back, they, they, they are just, they are just supposed to be on the background work or the background uh, uh, assignment in the church. So it is possible you can have dual assignment and it is possible that you are just only a pure philanthropist without even you holding the mic at all. Very possible. All right. God bless you, sir. I'm going to ask um, this question now, but before I do that, uh, I want to let somebody know that everyone might not need to be on the pulpit before we become a revivalist. We have some people that they just have to be at the background to be a prayer warrior. I was in a class lately and I was teaching them how to make some impact and you discover that there are some people that God has kept somewhere praying because you know prayer better revival. And if they, 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 they are praying and in that place they become a washer, in that place they become a commandant of some territories through prayers and you discover that when you are ranking them in some spiritual level, you discover that you'll be ranking them with some people they known and they have never been out for at any moment, but they are also called to cause revival and, and they are doing that on their knees and they are in their eating place. So I ask this question from you very quickly before we go ahead. Somebody is asking, is there a particular procedure they can put up to get their spiritual eyes sensitive so that they'll be able to see spiritually? Is there a pro special procedure for them to do um, a, a procedure to do for their eyes to be spiritually open constantly and for them to enjoy that spiritual side. That will be right, the last question I'll be asking before we proceed. Okay, sir. Uh, well, um, for, you, for your eyes to be open, well, it's a, it's a process. And um, no, I, I, I talk about spiritual gift. Um, the gift of the spirit, according to First Corinthians chapter twelve. From verse 1 to 10. That place explained explicitly, ex explicitly about the gift of the Spirit. So I would advise that person to go and read that place. Then, secondly, I would advise the person to go and to start getting spiritual books. Spiritual books that can, you can get um, some of the books of our father and Dr. Lukaya that has to do with spiritual opening of eyes. You can get books of God's general, God's general. There's a, there, there are series of God's general too you can get that also help you. By the time you start, because I cannot specifically give you a stereotype way because everybody has, God deals with everybody in different ways. If I give you, okay, A, uh, number one, two, uh, uh, pray seven to so, so, so time. Number two, pray so, so, so time. What if it does not work for you? That's one. Then secondly, there are some people that God will operate with them precept upon precept, lines upon lines. There are times that God will want to first of all deal with you in terms of you hearing him first and be able to master that area of a spiritual receptacle in terms of hearing him with your ears spiritually. Then if you have mastered that, then God can now begin to unveil the next receptacle by sharpening your senses, being sensitive to things around you. Then after that, God can ask you, okay, now it's time for me to now open your eyes to see Close vision. Close vision is when you close your eyes and you are seeing vision. Then from there, you can graduate to seeing open vision when you open your eyes and you are seeing vision. So what I would advise is that try to, um, first and foremost, stay connected to the Holy Spirit, get spiritual gifts, build yourself in each of those spiritual gifts by praying them into your life and begin to grow with it. With prayer and fasting, grow with it. And as you are growing with it, once God sees that you are faithful in one, he will unveil and open the next area of spiritual receptacle for you. Your senses will not be sharper. Then there are times that God will want you to make, want to make sure that you are uh, matured enough to be able to handle your eyes being opened before he opens your eyes. Because as people that are not matured enough, by the time God begins to reveal so many things to you, maybe you are not mature, you just begin to say a lot of things and through that, you can put you into trouble. So you need to get mature. God can look at you that you need to get matured enough to be able to manage divine information. 
before you can now begin to open your eyes. But it's a very simple thing. Just try to get close to your Holy Spirit. Connect to the spiritual gift. Keep praying them into your life. Grow in Christ. And through that, the Lord will open every of your area of spiritual receptacle. God bless you, Pastor. We really appreciate that. That what you just mentioned now reminded me of something that happened in the year 1994. I think we are on our yes. on our way to a particular retreat. Or somebody is calling him. We are on our we are on our way to a particular retreat. Let me let me pick up the call to get the question. Hello, God bless you, Jesus. You are welcome. This is a revival diary. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Please, sir. I want to ask you. I'm calling from Eastern Mendes. If someone is going to the end of your Holy Spirit, does your mom mean the person who cannot answer his prayer? Oh, please, can you go over the question again, please? Sean? Can you go over the question again? I said, when I gave her the baptism, I gave her the baptism of the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues because I've been praying to speak in tongues. But I didn't have time to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay. I don't speak in tongues, but I pray. So that means God does not receive prayer without speaking in tongues. No. Okay. All right. I got your question. God bless you. We we'll give answer to that immediately. Pastor, do you get that? Do you get that question? Yeah. Let me go about by the, Let me go by it clearly. Okay. Yes. She said she she's been trying to pray in tongues and she's been praying to get baptized with the Holy Ghost of evidence of speaking in tongues. She's been baptized with the Holy Ghost, but the evidence is not there yet. But she's now okay. asking that is it is it that God does not answer the prayer of people that doesn't pray in tongues? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, that's not true. No, God answers the prayers of people that pray. Pastor, it's a critical question that we need to clarify. Some people doesn't have that faith and they don't believe that their prayers yeah. are also answered. When they do not pray in the Holy Ghost, of which no, several no, no. are done through that, I would like to answer very well, sir. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's 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 funny. Now, God, 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 God will answer you if you don't pray in tongues. No, get it clearly. If you don't pray in tongues, it doesn't mean that you are going to have fire. If you don't pray in tongues, it doesn't mean that God will not answer your prayers. Is no, no, no. That's not true. Um, if you don't have many, God still answers their prayers and they be heaven. So that I've been said. So no, let, let, let that be written in your mind. But why the Bible is emphasizing on the fact that we need to pray in tongues is so that it can help us to build our spiritual mind, our spiritual life. It helps us to sharpen our spiritual senses. It helps us to grow more in the spirit. Now, if you have been praying for um, the, the, he have been praying for the evidence of speaking in tongues not happening. It that so many things are involved because by the grace of God, I pray with several people and they have said they pray many times they didn't get it. Just simple, simple leading in them into the Holy Ghost they get it. Now it's a very simple thing. Now the first thing is this: most of us when we when we are praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit comes, we don't believe it's the Holy Spirit. Take for instance, you are praying that Holy Spirit baptized me, Holy Spirit baptized me, and instantly your tongue begins to change. Many people don't try, they don't want to go back, they still go back to the prayer point, Holy Spirit baptized me, Holy Spirit baptized me. Whereas the Holy Ghost has already baptized you, all you need to do is to flow in it, is begin to pray. Because many of us, when you, when you get, when, when you start praying that the Holy Spirit should baptize us, and our tongue begins to change because that's the first thing that will happen. Our tongue begins to change. Immediately your tongue begins to change. All you need to do is to begin to pray according to the utterance, as it is written in Acts chapter 2, that they go, the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. So you just begin to pray according to the utterance that's given to you. And as you are praying, just continue with it because it's, it's, in, it's, it's, it's something that happens in such a way that it's a gradual thing. You can start saying mama, dada, because you grow in it. It's a language. So, and as you keep doing that, you keep praying that from time to time, you grow into it and you start becoming fluent at it. So try that process. Go on your news. When you go on your news, begin to tell the Lord, begin to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, baptize me. You pray on that several times. You say it from time to time. And as you say that, your tongue will change. 
Immediately your tongue begins to change. You don't have to go back to the prayer point. Just flow with that. And through that, you begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. All right. God bless you, Pastor. We really appreciate that. I was trying to make a note before that question came in about the person that asked question about the opening of the eyes. I said uh, sometimes in 1994, we're on our way to a particular retreat. We have a retreat we attend uh, from my uh, former church, and we're on our way to a place called Adbawa Ikosi. And while we're in the vehicle, I, at the at the Ikorodu roundabout, the roundabout yeah. where the yeah. market was at that time, uh, uh, mm. the, the road wasn't tied. The place was still looking very, very like old place then. And a lot of people were in the market. And as we we're sitting in the vehicle, the Lord opened my eyes. I saw a particular woman selling salt. Salt was a common commodity that everybody buy. As at, uh, as mm. at that time, everybody wants salt. Salt is in every houses, so everybody wants to buy salt. And this particular woman I saw that was selling the salt was just half human being and half animal. The, far, the, side, the other mm. side of it was animal, the other side was human being. And I, was, I began to ask questions, what kind of thing is going on here in the market where people... And I saw people approaching the woman also because the, the, there was <laughs> an old dog around that place. So I saw people approaching the woman and yeah. trying to buy salt from the woman. Salt is an essential thing that everybody wants to buy. Then I discovered that uh, God just opened my eyes to see that at that moment. Well, I'm, I'm referring to yeah. this because of what you said, that God can just open your eyes to see some things. Not for that moment. Lo and behold, I was not able to open my mouth to talk about it until about 15 years after that time. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just trying to yeah. put that to the person that asked that question because you, there, there is need level of maturity as I've mentioned truly for somebody to be able to have a open eyes if not you will see some things mm -hmm. and you'll be asking questions and <laughs> just, just like one that our father in the Lord referred to at a particular point that somebody was following a senior pastor and saw a lady and was already admiring the lady mm -hmm. and the father, our father in the Lord said yeah. the, the, the older pastor has to say why are you looking at this and when the the other person I'm making this note because we shall be rounding up now. And before we round up and we go today, we want to appreciate everyone that joined us. And I'm going to ask our pastor to, to pray with us, impact our lives, and also to release some prophecy upon us. I'm going to ask our pastor to pray with us, impact our lives, and also to release some prophecy upon our lives, even as we go. The King of Glory will bless us greatly. God bless you, real good in Jesus' name. Pastor, you can go ahead, then we give our further announcement. All right, the Lord. I want us to be expectant as we pray. Because the power of the Lord is going to come upon you. You know, this is a revival diary, and it is important for you to be revived. There are many a times that when we when programs like this have gone online, many of our online programs that we do like this, people get encountered wherever they are. So there is no barrier to the power of God. I want you to Stay connected. I want you to be, to be expectant as the prayer begins to go forth right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, we thank you because we know that you are a mighty and a great God. Thank you, Father, because of what you have been doing in the life of your people. Thank you, Jesus, because of this great program. Thank you, Father, because of great and mighty things that you have in store for your people today. What you have done so far, Father, take all the glory in the name of Jesus. I decree upon your life as you're hearing me right now. Let the heaven open over your apartment, over your room, over the place you're hearing me from. And let the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost descend right now there. In the name of Jesus, I release the power of the Holy Ghost to, to, be, to, to begin to fall like rain wherever you are right now in the name of Jesus. I decree upon your life because the Bible says if any man wants to speak, let him speak like an oracle of God. The Bible says, uh, call on to me and I will answer you and I will show you greater mighty things with that noise not. I stand here as the servant of the Most High God. I decree into your life, Mando Tele Gadambo Rida Hatia, and Kadumeno Togila Bratua, and the Gente Leto Macabro Doske, Ile Dembo Rakide Betua, La Guate Boloso to Libre Hila, let there be Lasso Tele and the Haskita, let there be a transmission of God's power, 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 Liga Tome Netoda, as many that are looking on to God. 
God for one revival or the other. I release the revival power of God into your life. Be revived right now. In the name of Jesus, let the power of the universe hit you where you are. In the name of Jesus, the angels of the Lord are descending already. Some people have been anointed already. The anointing of God is coming upon you. The Lord is revealing somebody. You have been asking unto God for a mantle. He got to bury that water. The Lord is empowering you, empowering you where you are right there right there there is a woman listening to me right now in the name of jesus the lord is going to make you a great deliverer in your family the anointing of the lord is resting upon you now the angels of healing are moving into some places right now like Look at the dew of heaven resting upon this family. There is a glory, the cloud of God's glory is coming upon that home right now. In the name of Jesus, right there where you are, I prophesy into your life. I speak into your life as the oracle of God. Right there where you are, I speak as a revivalist into your life. Right there where you are, in the name of Jesus, be baptized with power. 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 Be palia tonia cotelia rupa tonia ketua recopada ne sutelia. In the name of Jesus, let your life never remain the same. In the name of Jesus, from this very night encounter, you will not be able to recover from it because the Holy Ghost shall continue with you. In the name of Jesus, it is done and it is settled. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. We really appreciate your time. I will pray the Lord continue to strengthen you in Jesus' name. Pastor Wally Pastor has been a great, a, a, a great backup with us also in the ministry. And under the leadership of our Father and the Lord, Dr. D.K. Lukoya, we want to appreciate once again everyone joining us on this platform. And we pray that you join us again, same time next week, by God's grace. Another minister shall be joining us. Um, that is going to be um, next week, uh, Sunday again. Next week, Sunday. Next week, Sunday by 8 p.m., that is West African time. Join us again. Another minister will be joining us and they'll be enlightening us more. This is a revival diary where God is going to be helping us to open more into more about our spiritual life and how to grow more in our spiritual life. King of glory, continue to bless you and you have a wonderful time. It is well with you. As many of us are joining us now, remember to join us again by 11.45 p.m. for our possibility night again tonight as we command the week god bless you really good in jesus name and do have a nice time pastor god bless you too and do have a great time god bless you regards to the family we really appreciate you and we pray that god continue to strengthen you more thank you sir for coming bye for now Let it flow, flow, flow. Let the let the river flow. Let the river flow. Let the river flow. I got my belly shut. God bless some of us that are still around by the grace of God. If we are yet to answer some of your questions, we put them together and we shall be putting them together for our meeting again next week. And those questions shall be answered. If you have more questions during the week, just forward them to the numbers and we put them together for King of Glory to help us together next week. We don't have to go beyond the time limit for set for this program. And God, King of Glory, continue to bless you. I remain your friend, James Alabi, your friend, the Apostolic Revival, and do have a nice time. Bye for now. Oh, you can't